So now when I turn off the line art, I can see that I've got on the white background every color kind of filled in. Even the things that look like they're white, I thought, <laughs> were, were filled in. So it looks like I still need to fill this in. So much to do. So I use the magic wand. I have contiguous on. I need to select it from my line art layer. And then I can use my paint bucket, go to my flat color layer, and fill it in. I'll try like a light blue. Okay, so once you've done that, now you have to pick kind of the right colors for everything. And it's just a matter of a lot of color selecting and dropping in on that flat color layer. Let's see. Let's do one of these. There are warm grays, there are light grays. Lots of different variations you can use. I'm going to turn off that gray and I'm going to delete the copy one I made just to fill in those gaps. And then anytime I want to kind of color it behind my line art by hand on the flat color, I can just use my brush. And for instance, if I want to carry this color down, I can do that. And now when I make changes to that color on the whole, it will now be connected, even though it wasn't fully connected before. So we can connect by, by like colors. And then this area, this is just white. You can see that behind the windows. So I'm just going to quickly use my brush and fill all those in with a light blue. kind of painting behind the window. This is what it looks like behind the black. Do that in the shadows here. But I try to keep my flat colors pretty contained and pretty clean. So it's very easy for me to just drop in new ones. And then once I kind of see what's working, I can just copy from myself. Now we talked about some of the, the best colorists out there that can just really choose the right flat colors. And that does, that makes the job easy. But we'll also have the option to modify these. I'm using like all kinds of different blues on these windows. Just to show you the control you have. But then we're going to modify it with additional layers of color for highlights and shadows. I'm just stealing a lot from my different references here. 
just like these references have more than one flat or more than one color within each shape. I like some of these dark grays that they have too. If I want to separate, I just use my brush tool. For instance, I'm going to create a little gray space in here just by closing up the shape and then using the paint bucket with that new, whoops, I didn't close it up all the way, with that new color. I can see where I left it open just a little bit there. Close that up and then I can use my paint bucket. And I might do that up here as well. So you can create new shapes of coloring as you go. And if you want to change it, you just select the color with the option tool and repaint your edges. Kind of like cleaning up your vector logo, checking your edges. The only thing you can't change is your black line art, right? Because that's the vector. But we will be able to work on top of that eventually, once we're, we're happy with the color behind the line art. And digital coloring is mostly about the color behind the line art. That's what makes digital coloring different than digital painting coloring behind a real or implied outline. Let's see, what's a good color for that? I use my brush and just split this one up. So I have a light side and a dark side. And it's good to save your work every once in a while. Using just that right color can be exhausting. vibrant red in there. Now the reason I'll often steal colors from reference, you know, create a palette instead of just choosing them from here, is the colors you choose from the color selector tend to be really saturated. And what you'll see, what looks best in a lot of professional printing are more chromatic grays. So more kind of subtle nuances between different colors. Not always things that are so bright. You'll see lots of chromatic gray, which means just colorful grays. And you can do that in the color selector, but they all exist kind of in this realm. And there are ways to limit your color selections. Like I'll often just do only web colors, so it's a little bit easier to see what I'm selecting. 
but you don't want to limit yourself always. So that's why I open up these references. And it saves me time in the long run, for sure. And color theory is something you can take in a design class just to understand how to make colors more vibrant by putting complements next to them or contrast next to them. And it's something you can learn easily in practice just from observing what you like that's out there in the illustrated world. Gotta be careful. There we go. i to say architecture is a little bit more challenging to color than I was thinking. Just because there's so many little shapes, it's like a mosaic. But this is just your base layer of coloring. And unless you want it to be kind of like Sunday comics and fairly simple, this is not where the process stops. Liking some of these bluish greens. Alright, just gonna separate out this wall from the field. Drop it in. Remember that magic wand works the same way that the paint bucket works. It's gonna affect any pixels that are touching as long as contiguous is turned on. All right, what else do I want to change? Be the green of that tree. Green of this. Yeah, I think I've got everything filled in. I'll check with turning the gray. I should still see all my colors. Very good. Save it. I've got my local flat color. Kind of local, kind of abstracted, but definitely flats, right? Like everything, kind of a mosaic of different colors. Now, in the next video, I can show you the variations, and I recommend... You open up those slides.
for an explanation of digital coloring. And this is